Hi, my name is Tim. I'm Senior Application Specialist at ATRSoft. In today's webinar, we will have a look at how to use translations. Uh, this is the second part where we get into the settings and configuration of the system. Please welcome back Mr. Francois Simon, who will gently answer all of your questions. Feel free to use the chat box on the GoToWebinar panel. I will make room after the session for more questions to let you follow this presentation better. I expect the webinar to take somewhere in the range of 15 minutes. The webinar will be recorded and made available online later on. Okay, let's get started. If you saw the first webinar, you might recall this slide. I decided not to change anything here because we will look into all of these elements today with how to do it in mind. So we will make a dictionary, add language and content, and then talk about how to do everything so you understand more the technical side of the translation options. So lean back, keep your eyes open and learn how you can set up your system. There's no time to waste, let's bring it on. And I have to admit, the time now is one hour after the webinar. Basically Camtasia crashed and now I have to redo everything. So. I hope I'm not going to disappoint you the second time. Translations are dictated by your profile options. Now you need to define some dictionary content and this is done from the database option. The first thing you will see is the general and here you have the dictionary default language. This could be kind of like the global setting for, for the custom tool setup. If you predominantly have English speaking employees in your company, then this would be the default dictionary for everyone to use. If there are people who are not very strong in, in English or whatever language you're working on, you can have the user override that with their own displayed language. Uh, it's not going to have any effect on the properties. We are going to insert the right property anyway, but you can uh, swap that to a different set of property or a different column. You will understand in a second. The translation is utilizing dictionaries. This is done from the translation options where we have different languages. In my profile right now, I have English, Swedish, English US, German, and Danish. Each name has a layer attached to it. What this essentially does is it is going to run this layer and turn off the other layers. So it's very important that you know where you are drawing notes or in case you are, are using translation on notes from your drawing, uh, because we are going to hide and show different layers depending on your translation settings. We have the dictionaries as well. And I have a dictionary from the last webinar um, where I can show you the content of that. But adding a dictionary is really simple. You just click add, give it a name, and hit OK. And now you are actually ready to place content. So now we open a, a blank dictionary and it's time to populate values into this. I'm going to work on the webinar thing that I did the last time. So I'm going to select it and select contents. As you can see, we have, in this case, five columns, and each column correspond to a language. So if I were to remove the Swedish, as well as the German, that would leave three columns in my content, like so. For a small dictionary, uh, you can for sure use this interface. If you have a very large dictionary with a lot of different languages, then it's going to be quite troublesome to, to work in, uh, in this interface. But you can select the top left cell, hit Control A and Control C to copy all the content. And then you can paste that into an Excel and you can start creating your translations directly in here. When you are set, you just select everything, copy that and go back and paste it into this window. So really simple way of, of working with translations.
Okay, so now we have the translation in place, uh, the dictionary is all set, so now I'm going to utilize that in my profile. So for the profile, I need to set a model property. I already have one called description, and basically I'm just going to edit that one and show you something else on a, another one. So I have the attribute called description, and that is an edit box. If I hit next, I have the option to open a dictionary by using button function. When I do so, I need to tell which dictionary to open, and in this case, it, it is the webinar. So from that, I already know that when I open the dictionary, I'm going to look at the English Australia column, right? Let me create a part file. So in here, if I press the description, I now have a lookup and it opens up a window to my dictionary. The content is displayed in English in this case, and I can scroll and find what I need. It's filtered in alphabetical order, or I could type in and do a filter search. So if I type in lens, then these values are the only ones left. The other ones are stripped out because we don't need those. I can also go to the contents from this window and remove, or I could add a row. So you can manipulate your content uh, from, from here as well. If I need to have a de description uh, translated directly in the user interface for, maybe you have a, a bill of material with multiple languages, or you have description field in your drawing, where you have English, German, Danish description, and you have to have these on your drawing, then you actually need to translate in the profile. And I can show you how that is done. So I'm going to add a model property and just below the description, I'm going to add the DK translation. So DK, DK, it's an edit box and the data function is get translation. Now get translation is going to request you to set a target language as well as a source property. So now we are looking at the description, that one, and we are returning the corresponding value from Danish column. Pretty simple, basically. And we can just move those around. So we have description first and then DK afterwards. And now if I run this again, do a lookup, battery housing, I would get the description in English as well as in Danish. If you don't have a requirement for having multiple languages at the same time on your drawing or your bill of material, you can leave that one out. Let me open up this guy and open up the drawing. Now, first, I want to tell you a bit about layers. Now, if you don't see layers, it's sitting down in the left corner. Uh, you need to right click and turn on the layer toolbar. If I click on, uh, on the layer control, I can switch on and off layers. And you can see that if I switch off the Danish and English, then I only have my properties left. These are then translated in the layer called none, because this is where they are. They should always be visible. If I switch on the Danish, you can see that it's translated to, to Danish. Well, I guess if you are from Germany, you cannot see it's translated to Danish, but yeah, you get the idea. And for English, uh, the English text appear. When you're doing this, you need to be aware that SolidWorks have an option to will or will not print. And if this is set to will not print, we will not be able to convert that sheet. So just a heads up. The same is true for the bill of material. If you want to translate that, you need to make sure that this is sitting on a non-layer. When I say a non-layer, I mean obviously a layer not controlled by this because if you translate into English, we are going to turn off Danish. 
and any other layer name or definition we have in here. So you need to be careful and pay attention to, to that little detail. But that said, now I can run a PDF where I translate this drawing into Danish. So print and convert, batch conversion, create the PDF. And then for the additional options, I want to translate into Danish. Hitting OK. And you can see that everything was translated. Go away. No. Um, explore into the folder and see this one. So this is my, uh, my PDF I just created. I'm not sure why the first one was not translated. Might be I did something wrong with the top level assembly. Um, but everything else is translated into English. As, sorry, Danish, of course, as well as the header itself, all of the annotation is set to Danish. If I want to translate to English, I'm just going to run the print and convert. Batch conversion, PDF build. I'm not going to select the setting here. Uh, I could select the English and hit OK. And this is then going to convert this one into English. Oh, sorry about that. Wrong button. So explore and have a look at that one. So now that should be in English. And it is. Very nice. So next I would probably like to run uh, export to Excel. So if I go into options again, under the export profile for the export profile itself. If I edit that one, you can see that we have a language selection. If that is set to nothing, then we're just going to pass the value that we have in the file. But I can also translate into Danish. So note that the bill of material is not defined in Danish. So this is happening on the fly. And you can see that everything is working. And if I go into the options, I can select the export profile, edit this one, and not translate at all. And then it will come out with the native language that we set when we created the file. So that is, uh, in this case, English. That is all I had to show for you today. We are now focused on Christmas holidays, so we have not planned the next webinar yet. Please check back on our webpage and keep an eye out for invitations sent by email. If there is anything you wish to see, let us know. We would call that a New Year's special. We could take up one or more ideas from you. I am open for questions when the recording is stopped, but first I want to thank you for attending this webinar and I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you and have a nice day. We are in the life-saving business. We kill your routines before they kill you.